So you want to earn your Governor's 20 tab. That's what we're going to talk about in this video. The Governor's 20 competition, EIC badges, what kind of shooting iterations you're going to be doing, and any other details I can think about. So first of all, what is the Governor's 20 tab for? Well, if you've ever heard of the President's 100, it's very similar to that, except it's at a state level and conducted uh, through the National Guard. That's what the, the tab is for. You can participate as a civilian, but um, at least for me personally, I don't like that much because you're taking tabs away from people who could wear them on a uniform and you know uh, help their career progress. So it's a shooting competition in that you shoot pistol and rifle for the standard match. They also have a machine gunners um, competition and they have a sniper rifle competition. The standard one, which is the one that I did, was a pistol and rifle. And the top 20 shooters in either pistol or in rifle get a Governor's 20 tab. You're the top 20 shooters, rather, whether in pistol or in rifle, in the state for that year. Um, the President's 100 is similar in that it's a national competition and the top 100 shooters get a tab. Um, the Governor's 20, however, is not nearly as big of a deal as the President's 100. The President's 100 can be worn across branches and the Governor's 20 can only be worn in the National Guard. So if I were to go back active duty, I would not be able to wear this tab anymore. So how do you get into the match? Well, that's something that if you're in the National Guard, some units have uh, Governor's 20 matches, other units have Governor's 10 matches or something similar. Um, you need to get in contact with your unit and have them either pull up uh, the tag match that's the adjutant general match for your state. They should be getting information on that from like the state level every year. They hold it once a year. They should be getting that information. If they're not pushing it down to you, uh, that's on them. Uh, but you should be able to request it. I don't think that the MOS matters at all, and everyone should be able to go to it. So if they're not giving you the information, go seek the information out. Ask about it. Uh, look it up for your state and bring up the paperwork to your chain of command and say, hey, I want to take a group of guys and go try and get this because you have to go as a team, at least in the National Guard. Not everybody in the team necessarily gets tabbed, but you are scored as a team and as an individual. So my team got second place overall, so we got a little plaque that says, you know, Adjutant General Match 2018 and uh, second place overall, it, which is a cool thing that we now like have hanging in our unit, Armory. Um, we also had a team from our unit get third place. But uh, when you go, you're going to shoot two different matches. So you're going to have your pistol match and your uh, rifle match. There are two different iterations. There is like a combat iteration and then there is an EIC iteration or an excellence in competition uh, iteration. Now your overall placement for your Governor's 20 tab is the combined scores of both of those. However, you can also earn an EIC badge, which is an excellence in competition badge. You can earn these in any competition. You just have to be in a competition and place top 10% uh, with your EIC score. So your combat shooting score is not in the equation when it comes to whether or not you get an EIC badge. For your Governor's 20 tab, again, they combine both scores and your overall placement is how they calculate whether or not you get a tab. When it comes to the EIC badge, which if you haven't seen it, go look it up. It's really cool. It can replace your marksmanship badge on your dress uniform. Um, that score is purely based off the EIC portion. So... The combat portion, if I remember properly, uh, it's been like two years now. I think I don't think they're doing one this year because of COVID. I haven't heard anything about it, even though I've been asking. The combat portion is typically like um, moving, transitioning from uh, like standing to kneeling to prone, doing mag changes and stuff like that. The EIC portion is much more uh, just basic marksmanship focus, but it's still very challenging. So. I think for our combat portion on rifle, um, which you can do with an optic, and then the EIC portion you have to do with iron sights, and it goes out to 500 meters. The combat portion, I think we started at 300 meters or something like that, 
and we would shoot um, like five rounds from the pump, the prone, then 200 meters, five rounds from the kneeling, um, and then 100 meters and uh, five rounds from standing. And you're doing mag reloads and all this, and they, they incorporate mag, mag reloads during the shooting iteration. And then you get closer and closer, and that's like the combat portion. And I want to say that the kneeling portion is 500, and then you close in, and it's prone, supported, and uh, again on iron sights, so it's, it gets to be pretty challenging. Um, with pistol, obviously there's no optic difference. You're shooting an M9, and the combat portion, you are, again, doing transitions. You have to go from standing to kneeling to prone. Um, you have to do mag reloads. And then the EIC portion, I want to say that it was more straightforward, but it was also challenging to get scored because they had four, I do remember this, they had four silhouettes, like actual drawn out soldier silhouettes, and they had a circle target in their head, or I'm sorry, it was their face. So they had a helmet on, and then their face was a circle target, and then they had a target in their chest. Now, it was challenging because you had to have at least one hit in the face for any of your rounds in your che in the chest to count. So, and they had four of them and you had to shoot all four of them in a certain amount of time. So you're being timed with everything. And uh, you, again, you have to be accurate. I think it was like one round in the face, two rounds in the chest. And if you miss that round in, your, in the face, the chest hits on that target didn't count. So there's a lot of guys that would be right outside of the face and they would have all their hits in the, in the actual circle on the chest all the way down all four targets. But if they missed every shot in the face, they got a zero. Um, so that was the EIC portion for that. It was pretty difficult. Um, I got my tab for my pistol shooting. And really, uh, if we're going to talk a little bit about how to train for that, I just did dry fire in my house, honestly, to prepare for it. Uh, I know most people don't mess around with pistols in the military too much, so I took it upon myself to dry fire. I literally didn't go to the range at all to prepare for it. I just worked on fundamentals and reloads. Um, now, you're wearing kit. I wore kit and a belt, and I have uh, two pistol mag pouches on my belt that made it really easy for me to just reload really fast. A lot of other people were having to stuff them wherever they could fit them in their kit or they're putting them in their pockets, so they would have to fish around in their pocket, pull it out, like orient it properly, and then reload. And I had just worked on uh, reloading from my belt, so I'd gotten really good at it. Um, so that's just dry firing, making sure that I'm not jerking the trigger, you know, jerking down, and working my reloads to be really smooth, and it seemed to help me a ton, because I didn't think I was gonna get it, because I didn't feel like I did that good, and then I was surprised to find that I actually got a tab. Uh, the rifle, uh, we are shooting out at 500 yards with like over 26 mile an hour winds with the new bullet that the Army had just picked up. So we didn't really understand the uh, ballistics and trajectory and all that stuff. And the wind was pushing the round like two feet in the air over 500 yards, uh, which is pretty crazy. But yeah, uh, another piece of knowledge. Um, a lot of people think that when you earn it, you can only wear the tab for the year that you earned it. That's actually not true. It's a very common misconception. I used to think the same thing, but that's, uh, that's actually not the case. Once you earn it or the President's 100, you have it forever. Um, and you can go back as many times as you want, and you can earn more tabs. I have a buddy of mine who has like three or four tabs because he went back two or three years in a row and just kept getting them. The EIC badges... Um, you can get one in pistol and one in rifle, depending on your EIC scores, like I said. And you can get more of those. I think they start with bronze, and then they can upgrade to silver and then gold with how many times you place top 10%. I could be mistaken on that, but I feel like I, I read that somewhere. So uh, fact check me on that. Um, but overall, I highly, highly encourage you to go do that. Uh, if you get the opportunity because I'd never shot in a competition before, and it was a blast to go do it. It was just over a weekend, and got to meet some cool people, shoot some cool iterations, and at the very end of it, like I said, I didn't expect to get a tab. I didn't think that I did well enough with talking to buddies and really trying to figure out where we all kind of placed, and I really was just 
taking in uh, the fact, you know, trying to find the positives. I was like, you know, I got to hang out with friends. I had a lot of fun. I got to shoot at 500 yards on iron sights, which on iron sights, which I've never done before, and hit targets. And I got to be in a competition, and I got to shoot these cool iterations. You know, I was finding the positives out of it. You know, I had a good time. This is fun. I don't need a tab. I had a great time. And then I got a tab, so it was just a bonus. Um, So, yeah, like I said, bring it up to your leadership. Hopefully, they don't suck, and hopefully, they'll actually send you. I don't know why they wouldn't want to send you. I don't know why units don't send their guys to schools, because if you have more, like, chest candy and bling on your uniform, then it makes your unit look better. So, um I get people asking me about this tab all the time when I go to schools and stuff. So really check it out. Try to do it. It's a lot of fun. Even if you don't get a tab, don't get down on yourself. You can go back the next year. And uh, if you do really good, maybe you'll get an EIC badge because I don't have one of those. And that's why I want to go back. But anyways, if you guys have a Governor's 20 tab or President's 100 tab, let me know in the comment section below. Let me know what you qualified on. If you're one of those dudes that qualified on a machine gun or on a sniper rifle, that would be awesome. Let me know what you qualified on. Um, If you guys have any more questions, comment down below as well. Uh, If you like the video and if you want more, uh, subscribe. Check out the other videos on my channel. I got a lot of stuff related to the Army and gear and stuff like that. And yeah, thanks for watching the video, guys. Have a good one.